Can Parting be stopped? He is 2-0 in the series, one game away, but he has to play on the Zerg map now. He has to play against the current GSL champion, Sniper. Sniper needs the uh, forces of darkness now. He needs the swarm. He needs to take down Parting here. This is going to be so tough for him. When we went into the series, Sniper looked like the favorite player with all those games that he had against Protoss. Harding was on a roll, but still a lot of people said, okay, this is where it ends for him. But no, he has other plans. He is trying to go home early today. He is one map away of taking the entire best of five, advancing to the final to meet his teammate live in another epic match against Zerg. But can he really do it? Untuned Valley is gone, Cloud Kingdom is gone, and we are heading into map number three. This is going to be sick, man. I can't wait. The map number three, of course, is Abyssal City. The map where you would actually most expect to see the Immortal Push. Is he going to go for it, or is he going to try to throw another curveball, go for a fast mothership, perhaps, or go for the third base with Immortals? He could even go Stargate yeah. here. Anything is possible. Sniper took a risk on game one. On game two, he couldn't stop the Immortal timing of his opponent. We are heading into game three. It might even be the last one in the second semifinal at the Blizzard Cup 2012. Sniper versus Parting, brought to you by Colin Wolf. To the left side of the map, down two maps already, starting for Team MVP, the GSL Code S Champion, it is. MVP Sniper. Reigning champion, but 0 oh and 2. He's up against the player, the right side of the map. Might as well put an immortal in his booth. The Star Tail player up 2-0, one game away from the finals, he is. Tati Pati. I feel if he takes this best of five series and then maybe even the final people are going to start calling him the answer. <laughs> I like that. You know, we have a Protoss president, MC, but Parting Man, he seems to be the best Protoss in the world these days. We actually just had an election in Korea. Parting yeah. should have actually just crashed it himself, man, just taking it. I'm wondering why Parting is not the president of Korea. I think that would have been welcomed by most young people. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I'm sorry to say, Wolf, I think we had a change in government in StarCraft 2 as well. The boss toss. No. I it's think time for Zerg to step down. Well, I was actually just about to say that MC is now being replaced by Parting, at least in Korea. That is MC currently playing at the Home Story yeah, man, Cup. He, he tucked tail and ran to play against some foreigners in Europe. He's too scared. He doesn't want to face. He's like, I might run into Parting in a PvP and I just can't handle that. The question is now, uh, can Sniper handle it? He's down two games, but he's not out yet. He is still fighting and he tries to make this happen. We've seen amazing comebacks in uh, this tournament already. And can Sniper do it though? Can he defeat Parting three games in a row now? You know, he's, the thing is, he's going for the same build twice, even though the second game was a slight variation on the build, becomes a little bit predictable. But when you are in a best of five and you saw, like, as Sniper did uh, just yesterday, Parting did every other build in the book, Yep. Then you're just, you can't even call him predictable. You have no. no idea what he's gonna do. He is completely unpredictable. He's the one player that shows different builds all the time, and then when you least expect it, he is going back into his trademark style and he takes you down. This guy is so crazy. He is scary as hell. Both of them are. These are two amazing players, but Harding currently just had the better mind games here, played a great series up to this point, but he needs another map win, and Sniper yep. is not one to yield that easy. Sniper can rest easy knowing he's playing on Abyssal City. The uh, worst map that Frost ever played on since Dual Sight. And it's it's got really cool animations with water when units blow up. But I have to say that this is going to be a tough map for Parting to think the third base on. And as such, Parting knows that. He knows you may face another Immortal push on this map because it's so, so difficult to actually take a third and hold it. We've seen a few players do his genius was able to do it. It was crazy. I can't even believe he made it work. Some Frost somehow get lucky get an early advantage and then take that third base. 
the map rush distance is far to the third, but the third base itself is far away from the, the natural, so it's easy to do a big speed lane run by. Force to cancel on the next, you can do that once or twice in the process, suddenly just forced to, to do another all-in that's not well timed, not well thought out. If I'm Sniper right now, I'm wondering what exactly is Parting going to do. Sniper's job is now to really scout like a maniac, to find out what Parting's plan is. And if he sees another Immortal push attempt, he needs to be ready for this. He needs to have those units in position, spread his creep at the third, spread it at the natural, make sure that he has the speed advantage, and then try to set those flankers up, somehow yep. kill those sentries, this, get close to the Immortals. This pylon... Well, he's not going to use his pylon, he's actually using the one that is natural, oh. makes a robo. But with the robo that he uses now at the right side of natural, he will see with the rest of his structures immediately when an overlord enters his base. I think he's going to add the gates at that pylon to the left side of Parting's base. So, he'll know that there's gates going down, but he won't know why. He needs to get in here somehow, but the coverage is too good for Parting. This is a perfect place for him to, to hide his tech, and there's not going to be any way for Sniper to see it. He's going to send the Overlord in now. Yeah. Overlord is on his way, it will be discovered very soon and then he can deal with it. And Sniper now has to repair accordingly. He's starting to spread his creep, starting it right now at the natural. The gates won't be a mystery. Yeah, the gates are known, Yeah, but he doesn't actually know uh, if there's going to be Immortals coming with this or not. By the way, where's the sentry? Where's the stalker? Parting sent uh, the stalker across the map, but he canceled plus one. That's something that the Overlord was able to see that he's got floating over that little terrarium, whatever you want to call that thing. So he knows the plus one is canceled. Now he sees the Robo, but he doesn't know this is an Immortal. He may find out, though, because it's about to finish. Plus one isn't canceled. He canceled it and restarted it. Overlord goes down, uh, but he knows about the Robo. He's going to see the Immortal, I think. This is so close. Uh, is he going to cancel the Immortal? No, 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 no. Ah, no. oh, he sees it. But he doesn't actually look. I don't think he looked. Well... Whatever it is, I think at this point, Sniper is already preparing for his opponent's build. You can see him with a Hive Tech, you can see him even with an additional... I love this, he's going into an additional macro hatch because he realized in the last game that he had a bit of a problem with his Lava after his third base died, so he's already preparing for the eventualities. He will have enough Lava to deal with this, the economy is the question, and he has, once again, 57 Harvesters. He's droning up a little bit, but he's not going up to 64. He has Zerglings, plus one attack, he's going for speed, he's going for the lab, We'll see the road speed as well. He is going to do everything in his power to prepare against the Immortal push. He's got the Watchtower. He's got Lings already ready with speed coming out. He should be able to delay this a little bit. The Immortals are, and everything are spotted by this Overlord. He doesn't have, he doesn't have anything hidden. He's just saying, I'm going for right. it. Dropping the pylon here. We might even see him. He, he already has fake. War Prism. Yes, he's trying to fake this expansion. He's going to sell the idea to Sniper that he is not going to push out. And Sniper is getting a few additional drones out. But with the drone count that he has, that is still okay. That's completely fine. He's at 60 at this point. And Parting is already closing oh, wow. the wall. He's going the to wings. walk out. But everything is ready for Sniper. And the Lings, though, are way out of position. He actually drew them over to the third base. That's exactly what Parting wanted. But he, didn't he doesn't have a second cannon, so he is going to have to warp in some units at home. He warps in one sentry first. But the units are way out of position. He doesn't actually have anything to, to force some force shields out or to draw Parting here. Well, this is perfect for Parting. He's actually got the Ford Pylon going up now. Parting has the Pylon. The Zealots are safe. Sniper is gearing up once again. Army supply is heavily in his favor right now. But Parting, he's warping in more units. We have him with additional sentries. Zealot with the heavy. Zealots. Good trap on these lanes, but he has to use five force shields here. This exactly. time he, he couldn't wait. He waited till the last second, but he had to use them. The crease spread is so good for Sniper past his third base. Sniper is prepared. He is prepared here. He's trying to delay this as long as possible. Give him a chance to get more and more units into the game to get this army that he needs to crush Parting's push. That pylon is not going to be around for much longer, but he's got two additional ones coming up. Remember, the warp prism is there as well, but Sniper, I think, with just one or two more rounds, he should have enough here. Parting is supply blocked. Parting is also supply blocked. He starts additional pylons in his own base now, and we have one small this patience for parting. Is it enough, though? The roaches are trying close the distance from behind, taking down those pylons. He's trying to make sure that parting will not be able to use the warp prism for his micro. Both of the pylons are gone. He's trying to get another one. The warp prism with the next Next round of warp ins, 50 supply for a sniper, a huge lead in army supply as well. He is up 40 army supply. It's all about Parting's micro here, but he has to go on creep. He will trap four roaches, but 
Four roaches for five force fields with Sniper's economy and his production right now with 60 drones. I'm not sure if, if Parting is actually going to be able to make this work. The force fields were incredible, but he needed five to trap four roaches. They didn't trap enough, even though they were really well placed. This time he leaves the gap, tries to catch the last remaining roach, but he's not able to do it. He's out up to, oh my god, 18 sentries. He has a lot of sentries, so even though he's using force fields here, he has a ton left available to him. He is trying to pick off this tumor. Gets it, and this is eventually going to push it back, but Sniper is totally okay with with waiting even longer. He goes for this around now. Uh -oh. Force fields are a bit late. They are a little bit late, and here comes the Micro trying to use the Immortals. He has to drop it again, and that's exactly what he does. Sniper is trying to go in from every angle that is possible for him, waiting for the Force fields to be gone. That and was a great part for parting, though. Yeah, he is in this small pocket that he uses, and you pointed the count of sentries out. He has so many of them. He can just force field all day long. Oh man, Calder, that was such a great tra trade for Parting, and now he's pushing in. Resources lost, more than double for Parting, or for Sniper, excuse me. And he's pushing through, the creep is gone, he's pushed it back, he moves away from the pilots for the first time. Sniper needs a little bit more time, he doesn't have a ton of larvae, even with that macro hatch. Here come the force fields, he's flanked again, the warp prism goes down to pick up some of those stalkers. He needs to protect those immortals and so far he does a great job, he needs to save them and he does. 120 supply against 150, once again Is Sniper he gonna is trying do it? to win, and it looks it like Sniper does not have enough. Parting may actually just do this, all three immortals with full hit points left. Parting is pushing through, the roaches are dying, this is a Fizzle City of Parting. Three games in a row, immortal push pushes his way to victory, the hatchery will die! 26 kills on Immortal number 1, 24 on the second, 13 on the third, and once more, Sniper trying to make something happen here, but how can he do it against Parting's Micro? This is crazy! His warp prism control is too good, Parting is now even the supply, 16 Roach is about to come out, makes another forward pile on the hatch is gone, he still has the macro hatchery, but the drone count has been down now to 40, 46 probes to 40 harvesters. Without infestors, without any tech units, Sniper just doesn't seem able to pull this off. He's trying to use Boro to his advantage now, but what can he do? We will soon also have an observer here. He actually has one on the map already, and Parting now equalized the supply. He's at 122 against 123. And now here he goes in for the final push. He's gonna trap four roaches here. One of them narrowly escapes. He takes out another creep tumor. He can just wait and warp in more units. He knows his opponent does not have the economy, does not have the gas to get infestors. He would have seen them already if that were the case. So he can just keep warping in more stalkers and a few additional sentries, and then continue to push through the end of the game with his superior composition and micro. It's just the four spears. They are so crazy. They always close the gaps, and half of the army of Sniper just can't do anything. He's trying to get close, but Parting is hugging the tree line. He's going into those gaps where he can use them. He does it again, and half of the army is even fighting. The War Prism does an amazing job saving stalkers, saving sentries, saving immortals, and he... I don't know. Well, he tries to target no down the the Warp Prism with his Queens, but he can't. He doesn't have the DPS. Sniper now drops to 80 supply. Parting cannot be stopped. I think this he's guy dancing. is the best player in the world. He's dancing his units. He's dancing, he's wiggling his stalker's legs, and he is moving in to seal the fate of another Zerg player with a 3-0. Parting is going to win Sniper. this. He's the Protoss player's answer. Sniper man, he is desperate here, but he cannot stop this. 46 supply, he dances his own <laughs> units, but it looks a bit silly when you're this far behind. GG! Parting advances to the finals with a 3-0. Three immortal pushes in a row. He didn't use a single one yesterday, but today he wants to go home early. And look at this kid, look at his face. He lost to Sniper in Code S. His immortal pushes were crushed, but today the micro was just way too good. Oh man, poor Sniper. He was the reigning champion, but now he finds himself out of this tournament. 0 3 with three of the same strategies in a row. Life versus parting our final at the blizzard cup 2012 the two train together life has probably encountered the immor parting's immortal push as often as no one else in this world but does he really know how to beat it parting is the answer that Protoss players have been looking for he goes over to his opponent life actually just entering now the booth and this is 
This was crazy. And Viol a world surrounded by Zergs, man. Parting Jest pushes his way through the Roaches. He drops four shields. He stops them all. Terran is struggling. Protoss and Zerg players are dominating the second half of the year. And if we are talking about one Protoss player who's showing everyone how to deal with Zerg, Zerg these days, it is Parting. He won BWC. He took WCG. Now he's in the final of the Blizzard Cup. Up against against the Code S champion and a winner of the MLG championship. This is such a high class tournament. It is insane. And those finals on Saturday, oh my god. And when Parting advances to the finals now, if he takes this best of seven and takes the finals, I think there's no doubt in anyone's mind he is on top of the world, the best player in the world. Let's take a look at our results today. You can see Leonok fell 1-3, only taking one set, but Sniper was not even so lucky. Parting taking him out 3-0. Sniper dominated his group. He was so strong, especially against Protoss. But today against Parting, he did not stand a chance. Parting's micro, his positioning, his timings, his pushes, they were too good. Even Sniper's attempt in game one to be a little bit sneaky failed. And Parting is just taking this. He's making it look easy. But now he's up against against life against his own teammate playing on Saturday. Yep, here is our finals information Saturday at 7. Don't forget we have a Heart of the Swarm show match as well as an award ceremony right before that. It's going to be a great day of events. A lot of performances to watch there as well. So you can see here is the schedule. 3 p.m., 5.30 and 9. Make sure that if you want to go to WU Hotel, you can take the shuttle bus. You can also see those uh, subway exit information. You can look up the rest of the info on GOMTV.net. This is going to be epic. These are two of the best players in the world. I guess this is true for the entire tournament that we've seen. I mean, this is a tournament of champions. This is the Blizzard Cup. And in our final, we have a Protoss versus a Zerg. In the top six, we had five Zerg players, one Protoss, and the Protoss is able to make it into the final. Is he going to go all the way? Is he going to immortal push his way to victory, or will we have a life-crushing parting's hopes? It's hard to say, man, yeah. but... I will be Martin there to witness it. I yeah. want to watch it. I want to see what's going to happen. We're going to cast it, man. Yes, we will. So, guys, get ready for Saturday. We had great games today. Saturday is going to be epic. The Heart of the Swarm show match is going to be great at 3 p.m. And then later on, we will have the final of the Blizzard Cup 2012. Hope that you enjoy today's shows. Get ready for Saturday, and we will see if Parting can do it or if life is going to take the last tournament of the year.